You already know that you can do a ton of things with Moxie. I want to show you a few common ways that you can set up automatic things so that you can do the setup, but Moxie will help you streamline your business and make things a little bit easier. If you aren't super familiar with workflow automations, you may want to check out our help center. Check out our sales pipeline for uh, videos and uh, help docs on how uh, what things you need to set up in order to make your workflow automations ready to go when you're ready to set them up. I do want to show you here in pipeline settings, we have these default to-dos. So that's every time someone comes in as an opportunity, you have these to-dos set up with a relative to-do date. So these will roll for whenever someone becomes an opportunity in your pipeline. So I've got here, um, I want to do research within a couple of days when uh, an opportunity is added. And I also want to comment on their social posts within the next five days. And these will show up for you in your work to be done. So you'll see this is out of my pipeline and you can see I've got just a check mark here to say, yep, I have done um, the research on that thing. That will get added to every single one of your new opportunities in your pipeline. A really easy, like nice reminder, like you could use, you could do a 90 day follow up, um, whatever that looks like. It just adds a really easy, nice to do for you. Let's take a look now at workflow automations. So you can make these as simple or as complicated as you would like. Let's look at a pretty simple way you could use this. So in our uh, workflow name, let's say that you have a form that you would like to be filled out. So if you are a consultant, let's say you've got this one doc that you have each of your clients fill out and you just want it to send to them when they are ready. So we're going to put this in your opportunity enters this stage and I'm going to put it in this skills gap analysis pipeline stage. You can create as many pipeline stages as you want. So I would suggest making them as clear as possible. So I'm going to say skills gap analysis is what I'm going to do here. So that is what how it's going to start. So when I plug an opportunity into skills gap analysis, it's going to start this automation. So I want to send them an email and I want them to receive an email that is, uh, uh, it's from me and it's going to go to the client and uh, we want to send it to everyone to fill out because we want to make sure we get the best uh, analysis possible. So every single person that's associated with this client is going to get my email here. And then I'll choose my email template. <clears throat> So here is my skills gap form uh, email template, and I am going to include in this um, a form and also a scheduler. Now, you don't have to use our tokens. You're, of course, able to do that using these tokens so that it sends the correct thing. But if you've got a, a doc setup or some other kind of doc setup, you could always just copy that link in here and use this to link it so that it looks really nice. Now, this is going to send this uh, form over to my client to fill up. And then I am going to change the stage of this because now they are kind of out of the stage where I need to send the form. And now I'm going to update this stage to an on hold. And maybe I could also set up a, a reminder here for myself that after uh, they are moved into the on hold stage, now I need to have a project created so that uh, I can remember to follow up with them if that doesn't happen. For right now, we'll focus on this super easy workflow automation, which is as soon as I put them into a skills gap analysis, it will send them the email, have them set up a meeting with me, and now they are in this new stage of on hold. Then you click publish to make your automation go. Let's take a look at another opportunity. Uh, so this is a review request. So what I have here is as soon as I enter uh, an opportunity into the review request, it is going to wait for a set amount of days. So let's say I want this to just wait for one day after I put it in review request, or you want it to wait for 90 days or whatever that looks like. Uh, you can set up this wait for time period to set up for a certain amount of days before it sends out a review. 
you. So I am using my uh, send email widget here to send this review request to ask for a, a review. So either that is from this form or a recommendation on LinkedIn here. I have both things linked here. So now I can get reviews to put on my website or wherever else I need reviews. And I don't really have to think about that. So there is an easy review request. Another thing you can do that is related to your form. So let's take a quick look at the form that I have built here for my discovery. So I have created this form here with a question about a budget and a question about length. And I want to make sure that I'm only working with someone who maybe has this $1,000 to $5,000 budget and uh, has kind of an ongoing commitment for me. So I have added these questions here and made sure that I added a field name here. This is going to help the automation to know what they're look what it's looking for. So uh, this one is on budget and this one is about length. Now that I've got those set up, let's go back to my workflow automations and uh, I'm going to decide whether or not I want to meet with these folks. Um, let's take a look. I've got a couple of these set up here. So once that goes into the inquiry stage, which is what my form is set up to do, it's going to drop into this decision widget. So you just click and drag this widget over here, and then you can click on it to make, make changes. So I'm going to add, uh, this is uh, what I have done to set this up is I created a budget condition and it's going to go off of my form answers and I'm going to use these form answers. So you can see here, I set up that widget. My form answer is this, or if they want to pay me more than $1,500, that's great too. So what this is going to do is if the budget is either $1,000 to $1,500 or more than $1,500, I've got the operator here, or then it gets to continue moving on and the answer is yes. If the answer is no and it is less than $1,000, they're going to get a no thank you email here. And I also want to make sure that the time is right. I only want to work with folks who have um, ongoing. So if the time is uh, ongoing, so I'll just keep this at one thing. If the time is ongoing, now I know I want to work with them. So I just added uh, this would be length. That's the uh, name of my form field. So if the form answer in my uh, field length is ongoing, then I want to keep working with them. So out of this decision, yes, it's the right. And then check the right amount of time. Also, yes, here. Then I'm going to send them an email for a follow-up and say, hey, I want to schedule this quick meeting with you so uh, I can get to know your needs a little bit better. If it's not the right fit for a budget and not the right fit on time, I can send this no thank you, uh, I uh, we're not the right fit at this time email. And then I could even change the stage here to... Uh, a closed lost or just um, on hold or complete uh, whatever I want to do here. So I can, I can change these stages so that I know what's happening with my client and all of that will happen without me. Again, you can use all of these widgets and especially this decision to choose a path based on a certain condition. So uh, you'll be able to create really complex or really simple automations. That is just a few examples of common ones um, that and common ways for you to use our workflow automations.